welcome to the lab demonstration on configuring Virtual Router Redundancy Protocol Extended Mode, or more commonly referred to as VRRPE, on Ruckus ICX switches. In this video, I'll demonstrate how to configure VRRPE on Layer 3 switches, I'll show you how to display information on VRRPE device roles and states, and show examples of failure scenarios and common configuration errors. The image here shows the topology we'll be using in this lab demonstration. There's a 10.10.200.0 subnet on the right with a client PC connected to a Layer 2 switch that's then connected to two Layer 3 routers providing the VRRPE connectivity. Those two routers are connected through a core subnet routing to the 172.16.10.0 subnet to an internet router. We have client PC3 on the left connected to that internet router on a 144.49.10.0 network that's representing the internet or an external network. Most of the work we'll be performing will be on the R3 router A and the R4 router B devices as they are going to be the ones configured to do VRRPE operations. Please note that all IPs and routing are already configured in this network. I'll be demonstrating the configuration of VRRPE and some of the behaviors of VRRPE in this environment. We'll start the VRRPE configuration on router B. To enable VRRP, first we need to globally enable it using the router VRRP extended command. Once VRRP is enabled globally, We'll go into interfaces and configure VRRPE values for those interfaces. For a demonstration, on router B, we're going to use interface 3. And first, we'll set up the VRRPE by defining a VRID for this interface. Notice the change in configuration context on the CLI. Uh, we're in VRED1 on interface 3, and we're all set to start configuring parameters for VRRPE. So first thing we want to configure is our backup priority. The backup priority is what defines whether a router or router interface is going to be the master of the VRRPE virtual address. So we're setting that to 100 on this device with the track priority of nine. Uh, track priorities, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about those as we uh, go through the lab demonstration, but track priorities are used to um, change the priority if a tracked interface goes down on a router. Now we'll set the virtual IP address for this interface. That's with the IP dash address command and the virtual IP that we're going to use to represent uh, the virtual router on this network is 10.10.200.1. Then we'll define our track port, and that port is the port that's re related to the track priority. If the port that is configured as the track port goes down, our priority will drop. So we're going to be monitoring 114. If that interface goes down, it's going to adjust the priority of this particular interface for VRRP. Now the last step to uh, VRRP configuration or to make this operational is the activate command. So we get a message letting us know that VRRP uh, router 1, so that's the VRID ID we gave it, um, for this interface is activating right now. So let's take a look at uh, what things look like from a VRRPE perspective on this router now. So what we see here is the VRID is 1. We've configured that already. This device is the master. Uh, it is enabled. We have a priority that's configured and a priority that's active right now and that's 100 uh, because our track interface is up. We show our configured track priority. Uh, we didn't manipulate any of these uh, uh, hello intervals, so these are all the default values for these. Um, and everything else here is the default values except for uh, the virtual IP address, which is the one we've configured, 10.10.200.1, and a virtual MAC address that's automatically generated by the system. Uh, here's information for our track port. 
that shows port 114 is up and operational. Now let's go configure VRPE on router A. So again, we'll start with the router VRRPE extended command. Uh, we can shorthand that a little bit to uh, save us some time and save us some typing. Uh, so we've globally enabled VRRPE, and on this router, the interface that's going to be running VRRPE is uh, 115. So I'll do IP VRRP-E, uh, VRID is 1 as well. Okay, so we're in the right configuration context for VRRPE. Now we'll configure our backup priority. And that's going to be 110 on this device. And our track priority is also 9, just like the last one. Okay, uh, our IP address, that's the virtual IP address again. That's going to be uh, the same, 10.10.200.1. And our track port is going to be uh, Ethernet 1111. And again, uh, to kick this off and make this active, we have to run the activate command. Okay, uh, we have activated VRPE on this router, so let's take a look at how VRPE looks now that we have two routers participating in VRPE. Uh, from this output, we can see that um, router A is now the master. Uh, its priority is 110, which is why it's the master. Uh, higher priority dictates which one's the master, and on router B, we configure the priority at 100. Uh, all of these timers are again at defaults. Uh, we again see our virtual IP address, and we see that our track port of 1111 is up. So let's jump back over to uh, router B and take a look at what it looks like over there. Okay, so over here, uh, router B is now the backup. Uh, it's still enabled and a backup. The priority is 100, and everything looks fine. Uh, so it is seeing the master router. Master router's IP address is the 10.10.200.11 uh, address, which is router A's IP address on this interface, and uh, track port is still up. So this, this master router has an expiry timer, if it expires, this router will take over as master for VRRPE. So that's the method it uses as the backup to uh, take over the role of master if the master were to go down. Okay, well now let's examine some VRRPE failure scenarios. Uh, to do this, we'll be using that PC1, that's the client PC. Uh, and just some of the things we'll be doing is we'll be running pings from that client PC out to the internet PC on the other side of the diagram. Um, so let, let's go ahead and jump over to that PC. I have a connection to that PC right here, and uh, basically I'm just going to run a ping to the the PC out on the internet, uh, which is out at uh, 144.49.10.100. Okay, so we have good connectivity to that PC. Uh, we're successfully able to reach it. Uh, we're doing that through um, starting on the 10.10.200 network over the 172.16 network uh, out to that 144.49.10.0 network. So we have full connectivity, IP connectivity through the network uh, using our default gateway of that virtual router interface of 10.10.200.1. Okay, so let's let's break some things in our VRPE environment and uh, see what that does for us. So over here on R5 core switch, uh, we're going to disable interface uh, 1-1-11. This is the interface that connects uh, to router A, and it's the track port on router A. So uh, basically when this port goes down, that, that track priority value we set is going to uh, affect the overall priority of that router and, and hopefully change the way uh, the VRP network operates because there's no longer an outbound interface that router A can provide uh, out to the internet for that client on the client side. So when that 1111 link goes down, its upstream path goes down as well. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. And 
we'll just disable that interface. And let's see what our ping looks like. We'll just add a dash T to let this run continuously. So it looks like now we no longer have connectivity out to the internet uh, through router A or router B. So, so let's take a look at our VRRP uh, configuration or our operational state and see what we see there. So we'll get on router A and router A, well router A is still the master. Okay, so these are some things we need to look at. Uh, it's configured priority is 110 and the current priority is 101. So basically, uh, when that track port goes down, um, the priority subtracts the track priority and that becomes its, its current priority. So the configured priority of 110 minus nine of the track priority sets the current priority to 101. So unfortunately for us, this is still higher than what's configured on the other, on the other router. So of course our track port is down. Uh, let's just confirm that on, uh, on router B. Uh, we'll do the show IPVRPE here, and it is still the backup, um, and its current priority is 100. So 100 being less than 101 means that router A is still the master, uh, even though its outbound interface has failed. So what we need to do here is we need to rethink and reevaluate that uh, track priority value um, so that when that track port fails, its priority drops lower than the configured priority on the backup. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, but before we do that, let's actually go into uh, back into that switch and let's re-enable this link just to um, uh, you know restore connectivity to our to our fictional user over there on the PC and uh, make sure that they have connectivity uh, out. So let's take a look at these pinks for a minute. They should be restoring here uh, real soon. Uh, the reason for delay is uh, they're running spanning tree on those switches, so we're going to wait for the spanning tree processes to run through and allow connectivity. So here we are. Uh, we've got connectivity back. Um, the routers are still operating as expected. So let's go into router A and let's change the priority for this interface. So we'll get into the VRPE VRID1 configuration context. And from here, we'll reset our backup priority. Uh, we're still going to keep it at 110, but we're going to change the track priority. Uh, we'll change that to 20. So that'll make sure that uh, if this interface fails, uh, our track, um, our priority of 110 will be adjusted by subtracting 20 and it'll be 90, which will be lower than what's configured on router B at 100 right now. So we are all set here. Uh, we should be in good shape. So now let's go back over here, make sure our ping is working. Uh, ping is still working just fine. We'll get into this device again and disable interface 11. and see what goes on with our ping. So we're still continuing, we get a timeout, and then we recover, and we still have connectivity. Um, so what we'll want to do now is we'll want to verify which router is providing this connectivity to us. Uh, we, we can assume it's B because the interface on router A that connects out to the interface is now down. Uh, so let's look at, let's look at router A first. So from here, uh, router A is now the backup. Uh, its current priority is 90, which that is the configured priority minus the track priority, so setting it below the other interface. Uh, and we see that it recognizes the master router as the 200.12, which is router B's uh, actual IP interface configured on the interface we're using for VRPE. So we'll jump over here again to uh, router B and take a look at this information and it is now the master. Uh, its current priority is 100, which is greater than 90. So we look to be in good shape here and uh, everything is back in operation from a VRPE perspective and our client still has continuous connectivity uh, out to the internet, uh, even though we've disabled a, a port that provided connectivity from that master router, uh, the track priority uh, configuration actually worked for us to make sure that the backup took over the job uh, if the current, if the active master at the time was not able to do it anymore.
So I'm going to re-enable this interface and get everything back to normal and uh, get our network back to its normal state and uh, keep our users happy. So there we go. So that's VRRPE on the Ruckus ICX Layer 3 switch. Uh, we showed you how to configure VRRPE. Uh, we showed you how to display information for VRRPE and which information is critical, uh, that mainly being the configured priority and the current priority and looking at your track priority values and how those impact things, as well as you know recognizing the backup, recognizing the master uh, VRRPE router and things like that. Um, then we went through some failure scenarios and you know it is a common scenario to have the track priority uh, not high enough to actually impact the uh, the master or the state of a backup router and when you want to, tr to transition. And in addition to that, um, there are scenarios where you might have multiple track ports and each of those track ports that goes down subtracts that prior that track priority. So uh, there are some things to consider when you're going through that. So just uh, walking through that process, uh, doing the math on it, and making sure you have routers taking over a master role when you want them to uh, is critical to VRPE. So thank you for viewing this demonstration and have a great day.